everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna. Today I'm going to be going through my collection of face products. That's foundations, concealers, bronzers, blushes, and highlighters. And I'm going to be doing some swatches for you and just talking a little bit about the products. And if I have any individual reviews of the products, I'm going to be linking those down below so you can have a better look at them. This was just suggested to me a few times since I started my channel that I go through and swatch different things for you because it might be helpful for some of you of a similar skin tone to me. I don't personally own too many full-size foundations. I do have a few BB creams um, and I do have a few samples still on hand. The amount that I've tried over the years since starting my channel is going to be higher than the amount that you see here. That's just because I do work off of samples a lot and the amount of samples that I've since used up or thrown out uh, is just going to differ a little bit. So just keep that in mind if, uh, if at all possible, if I have photos of any foundations um, from prior samples I can link down below because I usually included swatches in those videos say for the Kat Von D foundation obviously I don't have that anymore even minerals foundation I did reviews off of two swatches for the Norskin and the Nordic Veil uh, the Smashbox foundation again I don't have samples of that anymore However, I'd be interested in buying a full size of that in the future. But anyway, let's just get into this. The very first swatch that you'll see on my arm is of the Beast Tang Aqua Luster Concealer Roller BB Cream in 21. As far as I know, this is a Korean BB cream. And this is what it looks like here. It comes in a container with a little sort of paint roller thing at the top. And I got this at the Showcase store. I'm not sure if this is a store that's available in too many places and it because of its limited availability it's kind of hard for me to recommend it based on that I do have a review of this foundation or BB cream I should say down below it's a very um, it's a very hydrating very pink foundation it is very very pale it's good for mixing in with other things because of its pinkness. I like the way it looks on the skin. It's very affordable. I think it was under $10 per tube. So I've used quite a bit of that one up and I do have one other backup. Uh, I also sent one to Erna Elaine. It was way too pale for her. So she's had to declutter it, unfortunately. Uh, next is the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation in Pale. I have a review on this one. And I've mentioned it a few times. It's a little, very little bottle. That's a dropper foundation, very liquidy. They say on the back that it's two drops for light fat, light coverage, three drops for medium coverage, four drops for full coverage. And that's just not true. So you'd blow through a bottle really, really quickly this size. Uh, these are the palest that this foundation comes in and it's very pale however very very yellow kind of gives the face a bit of a chalky appearance this is another one I like to mix uh, usually with the aqua luster BB cream it's not my favorite um, next is the hourglass vanish stick in Blanc this is a new acquisition I just reviewed this. So this is a stick foundation that looks like a little triangle. And this is another pink toned foundation. However, blends out on my skin very well. It's a very creamy stick and it's great match on me. I really liked the way that this looked. The only time that I had a little bit of trouble was with the milk blur stick. So I reviewed this with several different wear tests and overall it's one of the best foundations I've tried. Next would be the Ordinary Serum Foundation in 1.0N. This is another really liquidy one. I have to shake it up because this one tends to separate actually. And it has a pump that you can open and shut at the top. It doesn't have a cap on it so it does get messy. This is the palest shade again. All of these are going to be the palest shade. Uh, 
This one, I've, again, probably used at least half of it, I want to say. This one I mix with the BB cream. Again, this one is too dark and kind of a orangey shade. I think it's a little... I think it's a little bit mean, leaning more towards yellow than pink. So if I mix this with the BB cream, they're both kind of dewy coverage, light coverage foundations and mixed together they look really nice. They have that nice sort of glowing finish to them and I like the way that they look. But I can't use that one on its own. From this point forward we have samples so I'm not going to hold anything up for you. They would just be in tiny little cups. We have the Cover FX Power Play Foundation in N0. I've also tried the Natural Finish Foundation in N0. The color on those two is slightly different. I reviewed both of them. The Natural Finish is a little bit darker and it oxidizes throughout the day to the point where I can no longer wear it. However, I like the finish on that one a little bit better. It is a natural finish. It's very dewy. It's very pretty. Power Play Foundation is a little bit lighter, and because of that, it's a better match for me. Um, the N0 shade, N is for neutral. It is quite a neutral shade. It doesn't lean too far pink or yellow. It is a little bit more of a matte foundation than the natural finish. It's still wearable for me. It doesn't look too dry. I've worn it in the winter time here in Canada, and I didn't have any problems wearing it, so that's good. Next is the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation in 100. This is one of the least favorable foundations that worked for me. It's definitely, it doesn't look that dark next to the other foundations, but once you wait for it to dry, it's a lot darker and it's very, very orange. And this is supposed to be a neutral foundation. I found that it definitely is not very neutral on me anyway. It's got more of an, a yellow look to it, uh, and the 110 is very, very pink to the point where it looked orange right off the bat. So, a very dry foundation. This is another one where I have a review for it. The whole review did not go well. It just, from the minute I put it on, I didn't like the way it looked, and by the end of the day, it looked so much worse. It just... It's not the finish for me. It aged my skin a lot, so it didn't agree with me. Plus, there's a lot of fragrance with fragrance in it, which irritated my skin and irritated my lungs quite a bit. Next is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in Cloud. Cloud was part of their extension. I don't know if Jackie Ina created that shade or not. I've had some conflicting feedback on that. Because when I did my research, it said, no, she didn't create that specific shade. She created all of the darker shades, and then Too Faced made that shade. But then somebody said, you didn't thank Jackie Ina in your video. She did make that shade. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. So I don't know. Um, either way, it came out at the same time that all of the other shades came out as part of the extension with Jackie Ina. And it's a very pale, supposedly rosy tone shade. Now, I would say that it is a neutral cool shade. It's supposed to be a hydrating foundation. I think that it's not drying and it's not hydrating. It's just kind of there. In the summertime, this worked perfectly fine for me. However, I did wear it or try to wear it in the winter time and it did accentuate quite a bit of my dry patches so there is that and it is very slightly too pink on me i think so if you're more of a neutral cool undertone you'd probably like this if you're neutral leaning yellow or peach olive this is probably going to look a little bit too ashy on you and i do have a review of this the milani conceal and perfect foundation in 00a I've never tried this foundation. <laughs> I had a sample of it sent to me from a friend in the US. She sent me a bunch of samples and this was one of them and I've never put it on my face because as you can see on my arm it's very dark and it's very pink. I just didn't see the need to put it on my face. I just knew that it wasn't going to work. Um, so I can't tell you what the formula is like. It felt very thick going onto my arm 
but um, unless you guys want me to review it, I'm probably not going to because I just know that the color is not my color. And last from the foundations, we have Danessa Myrick's Vision Color Cream, or Vision Cream Cover, sorry, in N01. I have reviewed this. A little bit of this goes a very long way. It's very pigmented. It's like a pure pigment foundation, basically. So uh, not my cup of tea. Um, didn't sit well on my skin at all. And I basically just had a really hard time working with it. I tried it a few different ways and uh, just couldn't really get it to work for me. The color wasn't quite my color. It wasn't like horribly dark. It just didn't look quite right. So, and also I had to pay like basically $15 Canadian for that tiny little cup. So I wouldn't do that again <laughs> for concealers. Starting off with a white concealer is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in C0. I haven't tried the white concealer. However, I have tried its companion. This is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in C0.5. I'm assuming the formulas are going to be the same. So the C0.5 is a very pale pink. As you can see here, it's basically just a little pink piggy. <laughs> it's very pink. Uh, I don't mind it on my face. It definitely looks pink, but I can use it okay. It can also be mixed in with other things if it's too pink. The formula I really like, um, it's got that big doe foot applicator. You can see it in my demo where I was trying out a few different concealers against the Kat Von D to try and find a replacement. So it, it applies really nicely under the eyes and uh, as a concealer base over the eyelids does have a nice amount of coverage. It's not too matte. It does actually self set pretty well, which is interesting. You'd think that it would be too drying, but it's actually not. Next is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in Fair 02. This is another one I tested out in that video. This is very pale. It's almost the exact same shade as the Kat Von D one. However, I really don't like it. It's a terrible formula. Hopefully you can see in the bottle here how just weird it looks. And it's looked that way ever since I got it. I don't know if that's a separation issue or what, but it's just kind of weird. It's very, very dry. So the minute I go to put it on, it's already begun to dry onto my skin. I have issues blending it. If I take a sponge, sometimes it lifts the product right off of my face. So <laughs> I have no coverage. Uh, sometimes it sticks down sticks down in flakes that I didn't know existed there because with other concealers, I don't have that problem. It's just not a good concealer. I basically have only been using it for um, my eyelids if I want to do like cut crease work or whatever. I haven't used it under my eyes in quite a while. <laughs> And it does give me a sort of ashy cast under my eyes because it doesn't have enough coverage to color cover my dark circles. I have to use it with a, co a color corrector. I don't like having to do that extra step most days. I prefer something to just cover on its own. Uh, the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Cream in L1. This is my last tube of it, which is probably three quarters of the way gone and I'm not repurchasing it for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons she's anti-Semitic and she's uh, an anti-vaxxer. Uh, unless you believe her recent video, which I didn't even watch because I already kind of knew what she was up to with that. <laughs> so it is a very pale concealer. This was the palest concealer I was able to find at the time, which was maybe two years ago, three years ago even. Uh, it was, basically the palest thing you could find at that time. Uh, the formula did work well for me. However, I've found a lot of other things since, so I don't need it. Next is something that I am currently testing out and I have on my face right now. It's the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer in the shade Fair Warm. I wasn't even sure I would be able to try this concealer because usually we don't get new e.l.f. products here in Canada but I happened upon it at a local Rexall. They had three shades. They had Fair Warm. They had 
light neutral and medium peach. And they pretty well all looked the same color. So I have a feeling that it runs very pale. The Fair Warm is what I'm what I have on my face and it's what I've been testing out. So I am going to be doing a full review on it. However, uh, my preliminary findings are that it's a very, very pigmented and full coverage. However, it is quite drying under the eyes. Uh, it's wearable. I could definitely make it work. I prefer it on the rest of my face, but I can make it work under the eyes. And it's also not super yellow. It's more of a neutral shade. Next, the Smashbox Studio Skin Concealer in Fair Neutral. This is basically the exact same shade as the, as the 0.1 shade in their foundation. It's a very light neutral with slight peach undertones. It works beautifully. It's a very hydrating sort of liquidy formula. So if you have drier under eyes, you'll like this. It's a medium sort of finish. I have a review up of it. I did a few different wear tests on it and it went well every time. It does look darker um, in the swatches because it, it oxidizes if you don't blend it out right away. If you blend it out, I haven't found that to happen on my face, but just leaving it there in a wet swatch, I do notice that it gets kind of dark. The Annabelle Perfect Concealer in Fair. This is the darkest concealer I own. And there's only three shades. Again, they basically look the exact same. So there's a fair, a light medium, and a medium, I believe. You're not going to find anything if you are outside of, I don't know, like an NC25, I'm guessing. It's just not a good concealer range. It's an okay concealer. I've never done a full review on it because the lightest shade doesn't work for me on its own. I have to mix it with white or something very pale such as the Colourpop concealer. It's kind of moussey and very thick. It kind of sticks down and it's a little bit hard to blend out. Definitely not something I would buy again. It's just not my thing. The Nude Sticks Concealer Stick in Light 1. This is another brand I'm not buying from anymore because I found out that they're Trump supporters. Uh, they don't have any fair shades. It just starts at light one. So light one is a very um, pink shade. Once again, it's darker than some of the other shades. However, still wearable. It's a stick, so it's not a liquid. You draw it on in a little pen form. It's very smooth and emollient, but that creates a lot of issues under the eyes. I did compare this to the Makeup Revolution, the Colourpop, and the Kat Von D, so it is in a video. Because it's very emollient under the eyes, even if you set it with a lot of powder, somehow you're still going to get a lot of uh, creasing. You're still going to get a lot of mascara transfer. It's probably not your best bet to use it there. It's probably better to use it around the face. It's probably what they meant for it to be used for was like pimples and stuff. Um, however, you're going to have to sharpen it or clean it somehow, sanitize it, because it spreads pimples around your face if you're using it on pimples. You're going to have to maybe, I don't know, put your finger on the tip and then kind of dab it on the pimple. Maybe don't go in straight from that because I found that it does spread bacteria really easily and I'm a pretty hygienic person when it comes to my makeup, so... Uh, next, I'm going to do powder products. I have two bronzers. I have the Benefit Hula Light Bronzer. I haven't done a review of this. It's something I acquired recently. I won it in the Arna Elaine giveaway. It would, it would basically match my mom's skin color or maybe even be lighter than that. So it was a no-go for her. I've only used it maybe about four or five times. It's more on the yellow side of bronzers, as you can see next to the other bronzer swatch there. So if you have really, really cool toned skin, maybe you would not like this too much. I find if I'm wearing a cool toned foundation, that's when I tend to find it makes me look a little bit sickly. If I just have no foundation on, or if I'm wearing a more neutral toned foundation, then it looks fine. It blends out really easily. It is 
very powdery and it is blendable so let's say i go in with a brush it seems to pick up a lot of product but then it just um it doesn't stick down in one spot you don't have to worry about it looking patchy so that's really good next would be the bronzer from the elf beautifully bare pure glow face palette this is a little bit more of a neutral bronzer. It doesn't look too warm to me. It doesn't look too cool. I think I probably like the shade of this a little bit better. Uh, it's not, again, it's not very pigmented. Um, it blends out really easily. And I feel like if I don't put too much on, I could even wear it as a blush, if that makes sense. Like it just has that sort of color to it that it doesn't look weird to just apply it sort of in the cheek area too. So it's a nice color. I like it. Blushes. Going to do some blushes. We have the Pure Anata Pressed Cheek Color in Sweet Pea. Now it is sort of a neutral pink blush. It's the type of blush, kind of like the Tarte blush that was in the Sephora birthday gift a few years ago, that if you put it on your skin, you can't build it up too much. It's never going to look bad. It's never going to make you look like you're wearing too much blush. It's just really pretty. It's very natural. The Pure Nada blushes are very pigmented. So the next shade, which is Dahlia, if you go in with too much of that one in your My Skin Tone, it is going to make you look like you're wearing too much. And you do kind of have to make sure that your, your face isn't still too sticky um like say if you haven't set your foundation or even if you're just wearing moisturizer maybe you want to powder your cheeks a little bit because it won't blend out the easiest if it's one of their darker blushes and this one definitely would be geared more towards medium skin tones than i think fair because i have to use a an incredibly light hand with it I think it's probably one of the blushes that they meant more for light medium skin tones than really really fair but it's such a beautiful color that I'm like I'll use just the tiniest bit it will be fine. <laughs> They're beautiful blushes though you get a ton of product. The NYX HD blush in amber this was the shade that I bought when I was first getting back into makeup because I saw the color and I thought well I could wear that with anything. And I still think that's true. My mom has the same color. It looks great on her as well. So it would go for quite a few different skin tones, I think. Again, probably up to the medium range. Probably not for really deep skin, but it would still encompass quite a few skin tones. It is a little bit more warm. As you can see, the previous two colors are more on the cool side. This one just has a little bit more of that warmth to it. And it's... It's pigmented, but it's buildable, so you don't have to worry about putting too much on right away, unlike the shade Dahlia, which is like, whoa, I've put on too much and I've only just dipped in once. No, you don't have to worry about that here. And it's not so warm that you can't wear it with a cool toned eye look. It would still look okay. Next is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in Mood Exposure. This is another new product. Uh, this was in the giveaway as well. So I've only used this two or three times and I really like it. It's a blush that I feel like I can also use up in this area kind of to add a little bit of dimension and kind of bronze a little bit. It's got this sort of, it's a little bit plummy, but it's also a little bit bronzy. So I don't know, it's just got that sort of depth to it that I feel like I can wear it. Um in areas that I would wear bronzer as well and it does have slight sheen to it because it it's got it's got the blush but the little lighter parts are shimmery so it's definitely got a bit of a sheen to it it's not glittery by any means and you're not going to notice a huge amount of sheen so if you if you're like scared of a really shiny blush don't be scared of this it's it's just gonna look really natural Next, there's two blushes in the e.l.f. face palette. They look pretty much the exact same. So the first one 
is from the top corner and the second one is from the bottom corner and you can see a very slight difference but when I apply it on the face it looks the same so they're both neutral blushes um, one might be slightly peachier than the other um, they're very hard pressed in the pan so I do have to dig around in there quite a bit to get any product off this is the exact same thing I found with their pressed blush that was in the highlighting blush I've already um, kind of put it in my empties bag <laughs> I've decided that I'm not going to be finishing that blush I hit major pan on it but I'm not going to finish it all the way just because it was such a hard blush to use and these blushes are no different they're just very hard I don't know what it is with elf blushes the next one is an elf blush too but it's a cream blush it's the elf beautifully beautifully bare blush in rose royalty I realized like I was showing you all my foundations and then I kind of just stopped showing the products on camera <laughs> uh, I can like show pictures or something this is the elf blush it's you get quite a bit of product in here I don't think it says how much but and they might have changed the name on this I could be wrong they might have changed the name on this so I usually use a stippling brush with cream blushes this is an elf one so this is just like a rosy blush as the name would suggest um it's not too different from what I'm wearing today uh the actually the next blush that I swatched which is the model's own blush stick this one I would say is just slightly more peachy than the elf one however they're very very similar I didn't realize that when I bought it because this was from winners and uh, I didn't want to open the package there <laughs> I think there are I think they're a little bit different. This one is very very pigmented though. Uh, here like very very pigmented. So you have to be really careful with how much you apply. However, it does blend out pretty well. That's why I usually just take the brush on the tip of the blush and then just swirl it around the face a bit. I would say it's easier to build up the e.l.f. one than it is the model's own one just because the model's own is in the stick form it's a little bit uh, softer whereas when it's in the container like that I have more room to kind of swirl around and get the product that I need and the last one is not technically a blush it is the wet n wild mega glow highlighter in precious petals I wanted Blossom Glow. They gave me the wrong one twice. I ordered it online from well.ca. Uh, so they have something wrong kind of in their coding system that they send you precious petals instead of Blossom Glow. And I kept it. And the first one I gave to my mom, the second one I just kept it and I figured, well, I'll use it as a blush topper. But it's actually dark enough, as you can see here, that I could just use it as a blush. It's kind of got a peach pink gold shift to it and if I use a dense enough brush I can definitely use it absolutely on its own or if I already have a blush on then I'll take a fluffier brush and I'll just sweep it all up until it reaches the cheekbones because if I just put it on the cheekbones on its own it's going to look way too dark and lastly we have highlighters so again wet and wild mega glow liquid highlighter in halo goodbye this is the only i think this is the only liquid highlighter that i've ever had i have had highlighting primers but i haven't had an actual liquid this one is a little bit greasy i'm not going to lie it's a little bit greasy in texture but it does look really really pretty it's got a slight neutral pink tone to it uh, you can either dot it on or you can take a little bit on your fingers and tap it on. You could use a sponge if you wanted to, but I think the fingers work best to apply it. And it does have a really nice glossy look. It's just the texture of it is a little bit questionable. 
I actually have the four shades from the Kat Von D Alchemist palette. There's pink opal, violet amethyst, green emerald, and blue sapphire. These are all duochrome shades. I usually don't wear all of these on my face. I usually stick to the pink and actually the green are my favorites. The pink one, I mean, it's just probably the most natural out of the four, but the green, oddly enough, can be quite fun. None of these can be seen from the front because they don't have sort of like a base to them, if that makes sense. So they can only ever be seen from a certain light. So that avoids looking like you have a bruise on your face from the front. Some of these duochromes, when they do have a certain base color to them, if you were to wear a purple highlighter and it's visible from the front, it's just going to look like you get punched in the face. But definitely you can avoid that here. These are also meant to be worn as eyeshadows and definitely I wear those a lot more than as highlighters. But because it's also a highlighter palette, I included it here. There is a highlighter in the e.l.f. face palette. It is a little dark. I don't know if you can tell here, there's kind of a beige spot on my arm. By the time I build it up enough that you can see it, it looks a little bronzy. If I use it very, very lightly, then yeah, no problem, you can't tell. But again, these are very, very hard pressed products. You do have to go in usually quite a bit yeah, it. I don't want to have bronzer on my cheekbones unless I'm going for a bronzed look, so it's a little bit questionable, this one. I think I am probably just going to use it as eyeshadow or something, but again, I have to dig in so hard. That's probably the worst color in the palette, is the highlighter shade. Next, I have this Hard Candy Marbleized Baked Blush. Now, I've I've swatched it really, really thickly as I have with every other shade on my arm. So it does look very, very pink. But when used really lightly, this is just a very pale pink highlighter. So I prefer it as a highlighter to a blush because of that. It smells like strawberry candy. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> it does have just a really nice amount of shimmer to it. There Again, there's no glitter to it. And it's a it's not a duochrome, so it's a pink highlighter like the pink opal, but without the duochrome. Uh, next is the Mecca Max Skin Halo Diamond Dust in white gold. To me, this doesn't really look white gold. I have a white gold that we're going to be talking about next. This just kind of looks like a pure sheen with no base color to it. It looks beige in the pan, and it just looks like skin color when I put it on my face. There's no white to it. There's no gold. There's no pink. There's no nothing. It's just a sheen. But it's very nice. It's the most natural highlight I have. Next, the Annabelle Perfect Glow Highlighter in Topaz. This is a white gold highlighter. It's very pale. It looks white in the pan, but it looks slightly gold when it shifts in light. So it's just got this beautiful... The formula is really, really soft to the touch. It blends on the skin really well, so you can build it up from very light sheen to pretty blinding glow. And I really like that about the formula. I sent one of the colors to my friend Camille in the US and she's really been liking it. It was one of the more golden shades because she has more of a yellow to olive undertone. And it's one of my favorite highlighters for sure. And the very last one is the M Cosmetics Highlighter in Cream Pearl. This is a pure white highlighter. However, I do think it looks just the slightest bit pink as well. And it is pigmented. You do not need very much. I'm wearing it on my face. It's very pigmented. I put it in the Tarte palette, not palette, compact. And that's how pigmented it is. That's one swipe. It is so pigmented. <laughs> They come in a lot of different colors and they come in mini sizes. This is a mini size and they come in jumbo sizes as well, which is really cool. Here's a video of the highlighters since it's always better to see them in action.
So those are all of my complexion products swatched. If you have any other questions, please ask and I'll answer. I post Mondays and Fridays here on this channel in the afternoons Eastern time, but I will be taking a break for the next week or two. So no videos for a little bit. I hope you have a great day, great week, great month. I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.